course I have passion for my 49ers. I am not going to back down on this one. Sometimes I go extra hard just to prove my point. No, no, you don't get to have it both ways. It's 49ers face-off, um, the place where Jason does not understand that 3-2-1 <laughs> means we're about to start. It doesn't mean 3-2-1, finish your thought. It no, it means 3-2-1, shut it! It was a great thought, though. It was a solid thought, Jason. Uh, was, and I, I look forward to you presenting that exact <laughs> thought during the during the contest. Niner cutback, though. This is not <laughs> an adult cutback. Um, yeah, but does it not relate to a 49ers head coach? True. Mm, it does. There you go. So... We've got it going. Anyways, um, guys, welcome to the show. It's our first show since the NFC Championship game. Uh, this should be an interesting conversation between these two gentlemen here. I am the referee. I am Ant. And then, of course, you've got Jay Hill over here um, with the tip of the cap. Thank you, sir. And then we got Alex up there as well. And these guys are going to have a nice conversation. They're going to get into some topics. It could get heated at moments, but they're just passionate about their football team. Um, so... Let it be controversial, because you know it's going to be. So just, if you've never seen Face Off before, Welcome buckle back. in. It's going to be a wild ride. Um, it's time for the coin toss. Coin though. toss. Let's do this thing. So. I believe it's me this time. Yeah, I think I think it is. It I think is Jason me. called last time. You did call last time. You won it? last time with Tails, I Shocker. believe. Shocker. You did. Um, Shocker. Because you made the happened. whole Fred Warner That's true. conversation. That's true. Yeah, I, did. I did. I mean, when Fred Warner won his toss, by the way, you, you called went heads. with for Warner, and then he went opposite. So, Ant, I'm going to go. Uh, the same as well. I'm going to go with tails. Okay. It's heads. So it's like, <laughs> Hill wins the toss. Um, it's almost becoming comical. At this it's point. it's it a is. theme. It's so, just a theme. Jay Hill wins the toss and then proceeds to lose the rest of the episode. Wow. Oh. Okay. Well, Jay Hill, you won the toss. That's you get some to buffoonery side. talk. No, wow. it's really well, not. Let's, let's stay with the buffoon talk. If we get into buffoon talk again, I will throw a flag. Um, and I'll get very aggressive with 15-yard penalties or 15-second penalties or whatever I need to do. I like it. Uh, so, Jason, you get to decide who's going first on the next topic. This time, I will receive. Oh, you're going to receive. So, Jason's going yeah. first on the topic. I have a feeling he understood what was coming. And get ready. Buckle <laughs> up. You were about to get a wild ride into the first topic, which is... Buckle up, buckaroo! 49ers second half struggles. All about it, Jason. Everything you want. Who's to blame? What's going on with it? Why does it happen? Your time begins now. So, before we get directly into this, I want to go back in the time machine to, to last week's episode, folks. I was the one who said that the offense wasn't playing good enough. I was the one that said I didn't expect great things from the offense. Hmm. I was called a, a, a buffoon because based on all the previous things that we had to go by, the offense, quite frankly, has not been good since the first quarter of Dallas. My, my opponent up on the screen there was outraged by my it's dare to, not that way, to critique the offense. And guess what? The offense stunk again. Only 17 points. Hmm. The Rams out outgained us in every offensive category. They outran, they outran us. They out-received mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. They had more first downs than, than us. Mm -hmm. And we scored 17 points. In 12 quarters of playoff football, the offense was good in one, really. The first quarter in Dallas. After that, average to, to, to below average. And like I said last week, eventually we can't keep putting it all on, on the defense. The defense had one bad quarter in 12 games, or in, in, in 12 quarters. Unfortunately for us, that was the fourth quarter at SoFi, when they dared to give up a whole 13 points. And we lost the game by three. So, with that as the caveat to what I'm about to say, the second half was a failure on multiple fronts. The offensive line didn't block well enough. The running backs didn't have the holes, and they didn't get the job done. E Elijah Mitchell had nine carries for a whole 20 yards. Not good enough. It was 11 carries for 20 yards, actually. Okay, that, that makes it even worse, then. It does. Thank you. You, you just... Now he's under two yards a carry. Hmm? check had one carry for zero yards. I mean, Debo was our, our leading rusher, and he had 26 yards. So... That's on the offense. That's on the offensive line. And like you've been saying all year, Jimmy's great because he gets us in the right place. He didn't do a very good job of getting us in the right place there. 
Now, I do want to ask Mr. Fischel, who is our, our O-line expert, it looked like the Rams were playing five D linemen pretty often. Six. Six. Well, uh, and at, at times six, yes. It was mostly six. So what could they have done from a, a blocking scheme to, to do better? Because um, I, that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't there, know. If, if you go back and watch the film, there are actually holes that were missed, some of them by Debo, was, Debo yeah. Samuel, in fact. Um, but I think some of it is you have to attack a six-man front like that to the outside. Uh, that, that's where the, the area that you need to go attack, and they didn't. Uh, for whatever reason, that wasn't something they did. Uh, to be honest with you, if a, a defense runs six defensive linemen in the NFL, you should be passing. Um, that's what you have to do. You have to be able to execute the passing game. That will loosen them up, and then you can go back to the run. So I think a six-man front um, is hard to run against in the NFL. That's a lot of very big people around the line of scrimmage. <laughs> in a very small area. Yeah. Uh, very very true. Um, so yeah. with that being said, I, I mean, and, and, and I don't want to say, ooh, Kyle could have done better, but, you know, he... he he does call the plays, so, and and we did see in the first half when we got the ball outside on a, a screen pass, Debo had a pretty good result there. The other thing too, and and I I I I told this to a couple people that early throw to Kittle that that changes the whole game. If that gets caught, that's probably a touchdown. And at that point, the momentum, the oh crap, here here we go again. That they're, they're already up on us. 7-0, that doubt creeps in the Rams' head a little bit. I think I think I think that was a a, 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 a early game changing play as well. But if we're, if we're just talking second half, the offense didn't do good enough. I, I, and the only thing I will say about the defense was they it would have been nice to get off the field on a couple of those third and longs too. But but if I was a, to go go just a couple of them, well just fourteen in the first half, guy. You don't need to have fourteen. A you just need to, you just need to get a couple to get off the field. I'd still say 80-20 offense, though. There's no way it's 80-20 offense, man. Uh, the offense has taken a lot of flack for this, and I hate, to, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the Rams dominated the time of possession. They dominated it. I, I mean, they, they, it, it was really bad in the first half. Mm -hmm. The second half, the offense does a much better job of slowing things down, controlling the clock, getting down the field, moving the ball, and trying to do enough to, to keep the Rams' offense off the field. Because the Rams were, I mean, it, it was, uh, I think at one point, almost 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. Time of possession swung in their favor. It finishes 36-24. to 24. So the Niners, in the second half of that football game, make up a, a good six minutes, seven minutes on that time of possession. So they win it by six or seven minutes in the second half of the football game. The difference comes down to the first downs. They had 14 in the first half. They got 11 in the second half. They finished with 25. Um, I, I really hate to break this to yeah, everybody. 16. I, I really hate to break this to, to everyone here. This doesn't really fall one way or the other. The defense did not do a great job of getting off the field and left the offense on the sideline for heavy amounts of time, both in the first and the second half of the game, especially late in the game and early in the football game. That doesn't help your offense get into rhythm and establish rhythm. Now, granted, they weren't giving up a lot of points, which is a great thing. They, they bended and did not break for a good chunk of this football game, but that's a lot of bending. Uh, it's too much bending. And in a game where, where they did as much as they did, they had to do just a little bit more to give their offense a couple of more shots and some opportunities to do some things, and they didn't do that. Um, this was a game that was won specifically by time of possession. Specifically by time of possession. Because it wasn't either team's run game. The Rams rushed for 70 yards to the Niners' 50. Uh, it, it wasn't that. The Rams ran 26 more plays than the San Francisco 49ers. That's what this game comes down to. It comes down to time of possession. Your offense can help in that in that category by extending some drives, and your defense can help in that category by not allowing drives to be extended. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a team loss. This doesn't fall for me on one group one way or the other. Your defense could have helped your offense by giving them some more opportunities, and your offense could have done some more with those opportunities. Uh, it falls at the feet of everyone in this scenario. You lost a game by three points in which you, in which you rushed for 50 yards and when your identity is running the football. Uh, that means everyone did enough to try and win this football game. Your defense did enough keeping them to 20 points to win the football game. Jimmy Garoppolo, bad thumb, shoulder and all, did as much as he possibly could to keep you in this football game. He threw two touchdowns and threw for 230 plus yards. Uh, before that last throw, which bounces off Jermichael Hasty's hands and ends your season for you. Uh, I There's not one person I can put this on. 
everyone could have done something a slight bit differently or a slight bit better in order for this to go a different direction for the 49ers. Um, this doesn't feel like an offensive problem. This doesn't feel like a defensive problem. It felt like a team problem. On this day, in this moment, you had certain guys at certain times on all sides of the football who let your football team down, whether it's Aziz Alshair getting a ridiculous taunting penalty, whether it's Chukwiski so Tart, dumb. whether it's Chukwiski Tart dropping a pick, whether it's Jimmy missing George Kittle, uh, whether it's your O line missing on blocks, whether it's running backs missing holes, everyone didn't play well enough for you to win the football game, and too many guys made mistakes at crucial times to shoot yourself in the foot and prevent you from coming out of this thing with a win because your defense did enough. Your defense did enough. You held a team to twenty points. That should be enough. Your offense. I mean, other than rushing the football, there were times where you moved the football really well, moved down the field with the ease and methodically, like the, the opening touchdown drive, uh, the touchdown pass to George Kittle. That drive was absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Um, there were tons of times where the Niners moved the ball really well, effectively, offensively. It just felt like they never got into a full rhythm. And defensively, it never felt like they got off the field when they needed to and when they had the best opportunity to. That's the big one. Truly is for me. At least the special teams didn't cost us the game. Accurate. <laughs> Didn't cost. They definitely didn't. They definitely cost. I don't know if they necessarily helped. They definitely didn't cost. That that Debo Samuel kick return where he almost goes out of bounds. That that drive Why was kind of bunk. I thought he if he just not touched it, I think that ball actually probably would have gone out of bounds on itself, which which obviously would have given us the, the ball to the 40 there. Maybe, but it also may have stayed in bounds, and then you're in trouble. Yeah. It wasn't it was done intentionally. It was a good kick by the Rams. They caught the Niners off the yard. They weren't ready for it. Yep. They weren't expecting it. They thought they're going to put Debo back there and you're just going to kick the ball out of the end zone. And they're like, oh, and they no. took a chance. Yeah. And they gambled at the right time. So I'll give them credit for that. And the they didn't make the, they didn't make the Niners more... start in, in bad field positions consistently. They, they extended some drives, punt, punted the ball, pinned the Niners deep a few times. Yep. I yep. mean, the Niners didn't have positive field position. No. Um, it, it, was a, it was just a tough overall game. It's a tough loss. I, I do also think, though, and I, I'm trying to figure out with all the red jerseys that we saw in the stands, got really loud when San Francisco had the ball, and it, it was almost like they might have played some extra crowd noise that wasn't really there, maybe a little manufactured crowd noise, because mm. when it's 55% San Francisco and, and, and we have the ball. And we're doing a silent count. Uh-huh. Very interesting. I know. Mm. It, was, it, it almost felt like a, one of those cheesy-ass NBA games where they, they were trying to art artificially get... The crowd going. Or just what the Atlanta Falcons were doing like five years ago or whatever it was they got in trouble for. It's also true, too. Mm. Could be that. I, I heard a lot of people talking about that, that it seemed really loud in there, and it what, didn't seem like it was coming from people uh, um, just, when the Niners had the football. So. Automatically, it just, it just didn't make sense with with the, the, the crazy number of amazing... <laughs> well, hey, Niners Jay, you fans. never know. Maybe, maybe the Super Bowl just does better when there's a home team playing in the Super Bowl at home. And, and it, it's a Los Angeles... Mm. Team too. Well, there was one in Tampa Bay. Well. Back back to back years. Last year hadn't yeah. happened once in NFL history. Now back to back seasons. Years, I know it's, it's very interesting. interesting. We get <laughs> um, before we get into conspiracy at, theories. At though, before we get into conspiracy <laughs> theories, you guys have both you know talked about the second half struggles. Who does it fall on though, Alex? Because you're you're going to go uh, first on this topic. Who does this loss? The team. second half struggles fall on. It has to fall on the team. It can't fall on any one individual. Individual. It cannot fall on one side of the football. Um, nobody played it perfect in this football game. Uh, nobody did everything that they were supposed to do. You had a lot of guys who played at a very high level. You had a lot of guys who put out gutsy performances, both Debo Samuel and uh, I would say I would say Debo, Debo Samuel, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, and D, and uh, Trent Williams. All of them go out and gut th gut through things, gutting through you know being hampered by issues. And there's a lot of 49ers that were dealing with stuff. Quickly, Tars come out afterwards and said you know he's been dealing with things all season and, and especially in the postseason run. Bad so, hands too. There's 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 tons of guys who put out gutty gutsy performances. However, at the end of the day, there were a lot of guys who could have made plays that could have changed the game for this team. Uh, if Jamichael Hasty catches the ball at the end of the football game and doesn't bounce off of his hands and go into the defender's arms. Uh, yeah, it's a tough situation, but you don't know what's going to happen there on that third or fourth down. Maybe you convert. Maybe you go down the field. Maybe things go a little differently. Maybe you're able to get a field goal. Um, if Jimmy Garoppolo hits with George Kittle early in that football game, it's probably a touchdown, and you're talking about a situation where the Rams don't have to go down the field and kick a field goal at the end of the football game. Uh, Chukwiski Tart catches an interception. Things change. Jimmy Ward doesn't take a 15-yard penalty. The Rams have to try and earn that drive a little bit more than they need to. Uh, there's not a taunting penalty from uh, Aziz Alshire. The Rams aren't able to march down the field. What he's said? No. Nope. Nope. He, he didn't do anything. And gesture wise, nope. like 
he, he must have said something horrible for. I don't that, think he. I don't. I, pers my personal opinion is I don't think he really said anything or did anything that warranted the penalty. I think the NFL needs to get rid of taunting. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think it's stupid. It's too subjective. Well, it's not that it's just too subjective. Uh, you're talking about you. You already have a lot of rules in place which are based on interpretation, right? Which is never good. S yeah. Stop. Stop giving power to officials to interpret what they think is going on and start making things Cut as and black and white and as clear as you can possibly can make it. Uh, the more you have to... It's literally black and white. Oh. The, the, the jersey may be black and white, but the calls not necessarily are. Fair. The more you have to make them interpret, that's the more things in a the game they're having to try to pay attention to, and, and they already have old, enough. Out of shape. I'm not going to go. Good. See, well, I am not going well, to go there. I'm not going to go there. I've seen shape. plenty of in-shape, buffed-out officials. My problem is not that. Actually, My problem is this, the interpretation. That's pretty big, too. That's what I was saying. Hockey yeah, Sunday. 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 He's, he's, he's in shape. He's, he's in shape, dude. He's not uh, quite as joked as his dad was. He's got time, though, Jay. So, so, Alex, on the way. Right, so Alex gave his. So, Jason, who do you think it falls on? Hey, I tend to think that it falls on several, several people, several players. But it, I mean, Alex... Alex is kind of right in some ways. Whoa. No. It's what okay. is that? It's Wait, okay what? to agree. <laughs> I, I, I can't even believe what was just said. Oh, my chest is Jay's, tight Jay's about to literally spontaneously combust. Bust. I know. Um, but I don't. It, it's hard to say specifically, like, this is why we lost that game. But because there are multiple plays that a team of the, the talent that we have. And the and the 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 the, the great staff that we have, that they should have made plays, and there are plays that 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 these guys are vastly capable of making, and in a playoff game, you know, as we see, I've seen multiple times throughout the whole NFL playoffs this year, the margin for errors is very small, and. In that margin of errors, you can be up by by eighteen, you know, at home, and lose because you didn't make a couple plays. You you miss a couple tackles, and all of a sudden, Joe Burrow's still the man. But so it, it like I said, it, it's 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 really tough to to pin it on somebody. Right. I'm I I think maybe D'Amico, if we're in this spot, say next year, he'll have a little more experience of being in that moment and maybe he'll be a little more aggressive i i felt like overall the rams were just more aggressive in in every as in every aspect and it kind it kind of got us back on our heels and so hopefully now that we see kind of what sean and and his guys can do in a playoff game we'll be more prepared for that i i i don't think that you can really say that san francisco is vastly not as good as the rams even though the rams have all these stars so and since it, it is a very slim margin it, it 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 didn't go our way like i mean realistically from this point on if san francisco plays them three times a year for the next five years it, it's going to be two and one probably every single year, and it, it probably kind of goes back and forth too. I, I I really think as of now these are the two best teams in the NFC. So it there it, it it might end up almost kind of being a a '90s redo where it's where it was us and the Cowboys, and that was kind of it. Like we got geared up for the Cowboys, we see them, you know usually once in November, and then once in the NFC Championship game. I, I think the way the NFC is, is trending, it might very well be that kind of new era, too. Well, speaking of new era, there's going to be a new era in San Francisco because Jimmy Garoppolo is more than likely going to be moved. I would say it's definitely 90, trending in that direction. 98%. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, in fact, has said he's, he's you know working, his people are working with the 49ers to work on a trade. Uh, but the question, Jason, is going to be for you first. Um, where do you see Jimmy Garoppolo going, and what do you think his trade value actually is? So, 
Here's that great stat I, I was going to tell you about. Oh, boy. I'm waiting. I'm the last needles. four years, there's been 21 times where a team has had a fourth quarter lead of 10 points or more at the start of the fourth quarter. Those, those teams are 19-2. and two. Those, those only two losses have been manned under center by Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo's fourth quarter playoff stats are his completion percentage is under 50. His, his quarterback rating is 38. He has multiple interceptions with no touchdown passes in any fourth quarter. I think that that takes us from a number one pick and potentially being like a one and a four, maybe one and a three. I think teams with the abundance of quarterbacks that are potentially on the market. There's an abundance of quarterbacks on the market? Potentially, yes. Who? Uh -huh. Aaron Rodgers. He's not going to be on the market. Yes, he's he going to be a trade target. He's going to be a trade so target. On the trade on the, on the, on the market. Okay, so you're talking about tr trade Russell options. Russell Wilson, okay. Kirk Cousins. There's gonna, there's Kirk gonna... Cousins is not being traded. We'll see. He's not being traded. I, I can't say that <laughs> for certain. I can. New GM. He, I can. We'll see. I can. That He's not cat, being traded. Okay. Well, anyways. That cat number. Anyways, uh, back to Jimmy Garoppolo. And, I mean, teams who really need a quarterback are Denver, the Giants, probably with their new regime coming in. Obviously, Pittsburgh, Tampa. It, it, it's, it's interesting that, that the odds on favorite it, it was Caesars to go Tampa is Jimmy. I think that's. Right, there was kind of weird. There was actually, but, I think Caesar said Tampa, and then every like somebody else was saying uh, the Steelers. Yeah, it was, Pittsburgh to me makes a, a lot more sense. They, already, they obviously have good receivers, good good running back, but I think at this point, Jimmy nets us a two and a four at best. I I don't think we're able to get the the first round pick now because I think it. A, a contending team who doesn't want to spend the money for Wilson or or for Rodgers is not going to be willing to give up a, a, a first round pick because of his 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 fourth quarter playoff stats. I think I think that that, that will scare scare us down to a, a two and a mid round pick. Do you think a two and a four is good value for Jimmy Garoppolo? Since we don't have any. Ones this year and next year, and no three next year. If, if, if we can get a two and a four, I mean, I, personally, I prefer a five because that's where John Lynch seems to hit on picks almost every three years. So, but Kittle, Greenlaw, I mean, I, I can go on. You want a worse? You want a worse pick? Lenore. He, his, his, his fifth round picks are great. I, I get that. Like, like, hey, the more fifth round picks that John Lynch can have, the better our team's going to be. It seems like, but Christmas, man, <laughs> Jerry's still out on Colton McKivitz, though. That's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. That is accurate. <laughs> the response. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I said he's very good. I didn't say that he'd say he perfect. Um, Touche. But but two and a four is kind of my guess. Now I I did propose an interesting thing. I I heard to you guys. Would you do a a four or five and, and a player? Say Depends a, on the player. Say a Joe Hayden if he if he went no. to Pittsburgh. Why? Because we need. We don't need a good corner. We don't need a, a name brand cornerback. And plus, his you just made an NFC Championship game with Emmanuel Mosley and Aubrey Thomas. What do you mean? And what happened? We gave up hundred plus yards to both of the team star receivers. You didn't do that in 2019 when you made the Super Bowl. And you didn't have the name brand corner. That was then. Uh, well, well, Sherman's a big Sherman name. was not an all pro. He's a big name, though. Wasn't, wasn't anywhere close to being the, 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 Obviously. Big, the big name that we know and love. But Joe Hayden makes, I think, less than $10 million. So, I, Dude, I don't care if he makes less than what. What's the purpose of moving off of Jimmy Garoppolo? To get Trey on the field. Really? That's what it is? It's, and, to, get, it's to get Trey on the and field? And to... Kind of reset our salary cap a little bit. Are, are you sure it's to get to get Trey on the field and reset the cap, salary cap? Is it mostly to reset the salary cap? You're hoping because Trey can be ready. He wasn't good enough. But if Trey yeah. is not ready, Trey's ready. Is he? This Trey's is a guy ready. who didn't who didn't know what a seven step drop was coming into training camp. Did Did you hear Trent Williams? And did you, and more to the point, not just his words. Did you see his body reaction and facial expression when he said 
He's gonna. He has the, the 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 potential to be a generational talent. Of course, he has the potential and his to be. Face lights up and his okay. body's like yeah. excited. Like, oh my! I can't. Wait of wait course, he has the potential to be a generational talent. Have you seen him throw the deep ball? Yeah. Yeah, but did you know that coming into training camp, he never, never taken a seven, seven, seven step drop, drop before? I've read. I know all that. I, okay, I press so conference. we don't know. We don't know if Trey Lance is even ready the, to be the, the generational the, talent the, yet, the, or if he still players, needs more time. Even the defensive you, you players, don't, you don't know that. Even the defensive the players purpose, who go against him are like the purpose good. for moving off of Jimmy Garoppolo is to free up the cap space to continue to build a roster so that Trey doesn't have to be a generational talent right yet. now. This Correct. Year. Absolutely. But, but, but it's, it's not because you want to get the generational talent on the field. He's not there yet. He's not ready to be that guy yet. We'll see. You're trying to make sure that this roster can be what it needs to be. Yeah. Hey, buddy, not every situation is a Patrick Mahomes situation. And people need to stop I putting know. that pressure on Trey Lance. Didn't that pressure is absolutely ridiculous. But that's what people are expecting. People are expecting him to come out and be Patrick Mahomes right now, next, this upcoming season. And that's an unrealistic expectation. He he is he is coming into the league having one year of college football experience, I, I, splitting I, between quarterback I, I and safety this, in though. high school. I'll tell you this: he's though. twenty-one years old. I'll, I'll tell you this though: I will guarantee to you that right now on 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 my show, I guarantee you, your that, show that Trey will have a will have more touchdowns and less interceptions than Jimmy had had this year. You're gonna guarantee it? Yep, guarantee it. Stone okay. cold lock. Okay. He'll be he'll he will he will be better than eighteen and thirteen. I guarantee you. I hope you're right, man. I really do. I hope you're right. Because if he's better than that, then that's great. Because I'm not even stone cold lock sure that he's going to be the starting quarterback next year. Who's going to start then? That's for another time. For another time. Big yikes there. In another episode. Oh, man, okay. It's a, big, it's a big yikes. How is it a big yikes? If we're trying to it's, reset our, our salary cap, do we need to spend eight ten million dollars to bring in a a backup guy to start for oh, a backup guy to start oh, oh, for six weeks. Oh, Jason, you you think it's a backup guy to start for six weeks? That's cute. Then it's not going to be Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is, Jason. You're the one talking about how there's all these quarterbacks out there in the ether for for teams to go sign and trade for. You, right. you tried to name a few of them. Uh, look, there's I don't think there's that many quarterbacks out in the ether. There's Aaron Rodgers, obviously, with the Packers. There's Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson and potentially what's going on with that situation. Uh, there's Matt Ryan. You have Derek Carr that's going to probably be available. You don't know what they're going to do with Tua uh, there with the garbage. Dolphins. He's garbage. Uh, you don't know what's going on with Jameis Winston. He's going to be a free agent. Uh, outside of that, there is really not a lot of options. And of the guys that I just listed, um, there's only two there that – I would want to bring in to to start for my organization and franchise, especially if I'm a playoff team, um, you know, and then there's obviously Jimmy Garoppolo Rogers here that going teams to are going to be, I mean, I think, I think it goes Maybe. Aaron. I think it goes Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson. And then for a lot of places, um, it would be Jimmy Garoppolo. That would be the next name. I think he's the third name on the list for most people. Matt Very Ryan likely. is getting older. Um, he hasn't shown that he can lead a team. Huge even, cap hit too there. Even with talent. Um, Kirk Cousins has a big cap hit, but I'm not convinced the Vikings are going to move off of Kirk Cousins. So, I mean, outside of that, those are the, the names. And then Jameis Winston is still an unproven commodity. Um, he started off pretty well for the Saints and then tore his ACL. And, you know, you just don't have a huge body of big success with Jameis Winston. So it's Definitely still going to be a risk for some teams. The Sean Payton effect, too, there. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. He was, he was a, a 36 turnover guy the year before, and he goes to. But that's Bruce Arians. Nah, there's a little that's bit of Huck Bruce and Arians. Chuck at football. Chuck, Chuck and Chuck, Chuck it, baby. And Huck Tom and Brady's Chuck just, football. you know. Vastly superior. Tom Brady's like, no. Look, this, this be a little is more careful here, bro. I, I will give you one thing, Jason. I do agree with you. I think the value for Jimmy Garoppolo right now is a two and a four. The, the area I would disagree with you on is that it's because of the fourth quarter stuff. Uh, it's not that because Jimmy has shown in the regular season that the fourth quarter stuff doesn't isn't a big deal. He true. drives in the fourth he, quarter. He's um, actually he, amazing. Then he's he's done those things. So I don't think it's because of that. I think it's the health and the fact that he didn't get to a Super Bowl this year that his value goes a little bit down. It takes a little bit of a drop. Um, if he had had a three, four hundred yard game in the NFC Championship game, uh, then I don't think it would have had as much of an effect. But yeah. I think I think <laughs> the fact that he has consistently had injuries the four years pretty much he's been in San Francisco, other than the 2019 season. The 2019 season is the only season we've seen a he healthy Jimmy Garoppolo from start to finish. <laughs> it's the outlier. It's the only season. Every other season there has been something other than that 2017 campaign when he first came in, but only played five games. So I. I think the big issue is the health. Um, I think that is the reason why the value comes down a little bit. But then again, there's a handful of teams that are, I think, fringe on, on the precipice and the cusp 
of being a team that is not only a team that has made the playoffs or was about to make the playoffs, but could could contend. Um, you have the Raiders who made the playoffs, who maybe looking at their quarterback situation. That going, we forgot was Deshaun Watson too. Well, I mean, I, I, until things get cleared up with that, I, I don't think anyone's going to be taking that super serious. Um, but look, you have you have the Saints who you don't know what's going to happen with them. They're eighty million over the cap. Yeah. You imagine they're going to completely implode the about, roster. They're, you, they're imagine they they're not going to be able to take on a salary like Jimmy Garoppolo's. But you do have a team like the Raiders who just made a playoff. Who just made the playoffs? Josh, who's, who's Josh quarterback? McDaniel is is now the head coach. Who Correct. Very familiar. Jimmy. Very familiar with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, you have the Eagles who aren't necessarily completely sold on Jalen Hurts. You would think. Um, who have a team that Nick Sirianni figured out the run game actually can be some success. They have a lot, of, a lot of draft picks too, and a defense that's very, very good. Uh, you have but a Dol- aging. You have a Dolphins team who might end up with Mike McDaniel, who has said God, Jimmy Garoppolo is one of the best throwers of the football on planet Earth, who may want to bring him in instead of Tua to have him all be the quarterback picks. with a defense. I want all my picks back. <laughs> going I want Kevin. all this. Going all Kevin <laughs> this future of this team and, picks and, back and 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 throw in. David Putney. Just David because Putney. I feel like it. <laughs> yeah. Just because uh, I feel like and it. And then you have the Broncos, right, who have a Packers O coordinator. Uh, again, a team that's going to be predicated on the run. Uh, the Steelers, a team that is, you know, a quarterback away. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, I would think, Although I would imagine. Although lines a little bit maybe uh, still too, though. Uh, agreed with you there. Yeah. Agreed with you there. But they could address that in the draft. They could go out and sign some guys in free agency. They're going to have to. Jimmy's going to probably, wherever multiple. Jimmy goes next, he's going to sign an extension. I have to imagine that all of those things combined, like the amount of teams that we just talked about right there that are that are looking for things. You have the Panthers as well who could come in and swoop in. The Browns, if they're not completely sold on Baker. And as the as Commanders. shouldn't be. Let's not forget about the Washington Commanders. They're out there. They got a defense. They got a running back. They got a wide receiver. They have some options. They may be doing, some, a- doing some stuff. Um, look, all I'm saying is a two on the four is the baseline, but I think you could do better than that. My only concern is, is that if you start going like trading Jimmy away and bringing in a player, you start eating into that cap and that's that number and the, the... and the type of players that you can re-sign if you're the San Francisco 49ers. The right player, Jason, I'm on board with you mm-hmm. on. The right player. And Chase Claypool. There it is. Okay. The, the, is the was, player. That was not happening. Hey. Chase Claypool, a sixth round pick. He's a diva, though. Jimmy Gar- I don't he care. He's a diva ass. He's position. Guess, guess who you're not signing in free agency if Chase Claypool comes? Cordero Patterson, see you later. We don't need you. We got Devo. We got BA. We got Chase Claypool and Trey freaking Lance. Bro, sign me up for that tomorrow. Trey Lance can start. Tomorrow. You can even start a quarterback tomorrow if you pull that trade off. I you don't want another the, quarterback. Actually, I want the, that. The the diva angle because we know that Mike Tomlin called his ass out. Well, it's not that, but, but dude, they've, that, had, that, they've had problems that might with actually, wide receivers. They've that had might problems actually with, help him to be moved. They've had problems like, with guy, wide receivers since Antonio Brown. I think the problem is Mike Tomlin in the culture there. I don't necessarily blame him. Ooh. Antonio Brown? Really? Dude, oh, A B that, Juju, now guy, this. That guy. A B man. Juju, now this. There's a, a constant theme here, and the only thing that's consistent is Mike Tomlin. That's a, it. A B's been a headache everywhere he's gone. He was a headache in in Oakland. He was he was a headache. Well, but I don't think we need to explain A B's. I mean, A B's situation and is he was a, damn sure he, a, a, a headache in Tampa this year. Yeah, literally when he signed no the way. team, they just send a lifetime supply of Advil to the head coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but here, my my point is. My point is with Pittsburgh. How do you guys do that? I don't never. I never understand. Uh, hey. Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh has had a consistent this problem wide arm. with wide receivers. You know, just being mm. locker room distractions right. and a problem. Those, and those kind of guys, though, too. There's. A, is it a drafting of those kind of guys, or is it the culture that's established there? The like locker I said, room. Since Antonio Brown's been that way everywhere he's been, and it's it, at least that one doesn't. Now, if, if Juju, Juju was goes, Ju, was John, was Juju that way when Juju got there? No. Was was he sure as hell was Claypool that way? that way when Claypool got there? Well, this no, is something that develops over time. It doesn't happen Brian right away. Kelly w- would have killed him if he did, did that stuff. You mean Brian Kelly? <laughs> that, that guy. That, that guy, guy finances they, his waterbed. That guy went to. He <laughs> finances his waterbed. He, he he did that stupid dance and, and didn't even get the guy to actually stay. I in, would in go to Bama after that dance too. <laughs> I not He's be like, ooh. Nick Saban's looking better and better. The, the, the Chase Claypool thing is interesting, right? Because the, that does put a value on a player. And this is what I told Alex. He's also I, a cheap player. I told him, you know, a, a a draft pick and a player makes sense if it's the right player. If you right. believe it's a player that can get you over the top. Um, you think it's a corner. Alex is going with Chase Claypool. He I, already knows where my heartstrings are with Chase Claypool. So I, that's an easy sell for me. I've even heard some people 
throughout the name Cameron Bray, too, even. No. I did see that text where you said nope. Cameron Bray yeah, you nope. know, as another tight end as a receiving option. I don't hate that. It just depends on what the draft capital that you're getting with it. I see. And that's the thing is, I think it would be like Cameron Brait in a fifth. And I'm sorry. Um, see, I, I, would, I would rather, be, I would rather have like, a second. I'd rather have a second and a fifth than Cameron Brait in a yeah. fifth. If, if it was, if it was Tampa for him, I'd rather it be like a, him and a and a three. Though, but I don't think Tampa would do that. Tampa, yeah, maybe. No, because I mean Gronk's not necessarily re-signed. You I just have Gronk him. Will, yes. But they also have. I think he's gonna. I actually think he'll retire again, but I. They also Did you do see have, the letter he wrote for Tom Brady? Yeah. It didn't sound like a guy that was going to retire right away. It, it's Gronk, though. He, he, he could change his mind. He might be in WWE next week. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll see him on, on. Accurate. In, Accurate. In Saudi Arabia. And, yeah. I, this is what I mean. I don't, I don't think they would move off of Cameron Bray. I think they have a they nice have combination OJ Howard, with though. OJ Howard and Bray, though. Yeah. I think they have a nice combo with those two, with what you can do. Bray, Bray can, did a, a really good job against the Rams coming out. Out of the spot, actually, too. I was like, wow, that that's actually kind of, kind of impressive. Okay, so I gather through all this that we kind of agree. A two and a four seems realistic for Jimmy Garoppolo. And then a player, if it's the right player, and then the equivalent. On a rookie contract. Yeah, so. there has to be something that's affordable for the 49ers, but a, a st- still a decent pick um, that goes along with it. Uh, I think everyone's kind of close on this, actually. I wonder what the cutback crew thinks. Um, let us know in the comment section. But we got to get to the drive. Because we want to know your way too early NFC rankings. Top Jason, for the drive. Jason, because you won the toss, you get to choose who gets to go first. You're going to have one going minute to again. give your top five in the oh NFC. My. And what, you know, kind of give a, a little glimpse. Of course, there's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be movement with the 49ers and every other team. But um, just right now where you see it stand. So you're going to go first? All right. So, Jason, you're on the clock. Here you go. So I'm basing this on Aaron Rodgers not being in Green Bay anymore. I do think he ends up in an AFC team, pro- pro- probably Denver. Um, so Rams have to have to be one. They're the reigning, de- defending, undisputed NFC champion. So they have to, they've earned that right. San Francisco's two, very Ooh. solid two, even with Ooh. the rookie quarterback coming in. I I love our defense. I I think it's only going to get get better uh, with year two uh, under D'Amico, and and, and our our. our our skill players are, are still set. Number three, we're beginning to get a little, get, get a little iffy. I, I'm going to go Arizona still. I, I I think they have the talent to to get there. Number four, I'm going to go the Dallas Cowboys. Mike McCarthy's still their head coach, so so they give me no hard in four. And number five, I'm going to going to say I I don't even know here that this one's going to be tough, but I'm going to say Tampa. Whoa. Who do you think their quarterback's going to be? That's why it's, it's tough. I have okay. no idea. Okay, I was just curious <laughs> but, if maybe you had an idea that's why you were going the, five. The, their overall roster is still going to be really good. The defense good, is good, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm not there with you, Jason. I, well, I that's can't, true because you're I, over there. I can't get there with you on this. Um, look, I, I think there's a lot of moving parts. Um, I think... The, well, I, I think the I AFC really. is the one we're going to have the most interchanging. I think the NFC is the thing is the place where it's going to be the most stable. Um do I think Aaron Rodgers could lead the Packers? I do. Um, but until he does, I'm not going to knock them down off the pedestal um, because someone's going to have to come through and wow them. And I imagine it's going to have to include a quarterback in some way, shape, or form that's going to help them hopefully stay somewhat relevant. So, look, the reality is that the Rams are going to be the, the number one team coming into next year. You still got Stafford. You still have a lot of weapons. Um, two, though, two, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, I would imagine Sunny the Cowboys. Scale. The Cowboys might be there, but I'm not going to give it to the Cowboys. Uh, instead, I'm going to give it to Green Bay. Green Bay is going to be the two seed. Three is going to be San Francisco. Uh, four from there is going to be the Minnesota Vikings, uh, and then five from there, last but certainly, certainly not least, is going to be the Cowboys. Um, I cannot give any credence at all whatsoever to the Arizona Cardinals. The Niners were five. The Niners were three. Oh, okay. The Niners were three. So okay. Niners at three. Interesting. So See now, I, I I almost had the Vikings in there, but the the Packers just lost a home playoff game to a team that didn't even score a touchdown on offense. Yeah, I'm aware, but the Niners are so Niners are rolling with a second year quarterback in Trey Lance that you don't know anything about. Well, the, the Packers are going to have Jordan Love, so uh, unless Aaron Rodgers stays, Rodgers is not staying. He could. 
it's not it's not a for sure guaranteed that he's forty percent he leaves, forty percent he retires, and twenty percent he ain't retiring. He's, there is a zero percent chance that Aaron Rodgers is retiring twice now. He said he did, is a zero percent chance that Tom, that so he is that's retiring. So either a negotiating point to get him out of there, or hundred percent, he's really doing it then. It's a negotiating point to get out of there. I so think it's, I think then. it's I think it's about forty five fifty five, is where I uh, that's where I fall on this with Aaron Rodgers leaving Green Bay. It's forty five to fifty five. Um, that 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 to me is not a guarantee that he's leaving. Wow, why it's so a slightly low? above average why, that, that why he's so that low? he's that he's leaving. Why so low? Yeah, a team has to be willing to take on that contract. They redid his contract so it'd be e- easier for him to. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that, but you know what else they were hoping? I think they were hoping Jordan Love was going to show a lot more development. Than he showed trash. also. I agree with you. Why would you move off of this right now Hot when you can roll it, try and run it back with maybe one more year? Because if he tells him, if you don't trade me, I'm going to retire. <laughs> Well, what if they call his bluff and, and actually just say, okay, retire? And he says, okay, I'll sit out this in, in entire year then. Then his contract is still good the next year. Yeah, he, he would have to retire. Well, he says he retires. and then, I mean, He's not going he, to. Look, he's not, he does the he's not going to retire. They're either going to fix the, the problem that they have there, or he's going to get dealt to someone in the AFC. That's what's going to happen. That's what I said. Most likely that is what's going to happen. He's going to somebody in the AFC. Yeah, I think you guys agree. It could be Denver. I, I, I also think... Even though he probably doesn't necessarily want to, if he actually looks at the team, I think the Browns could be after in on him too. It just does he want to be in Cleveland? That's the issue. Is no way. I think the Raiders no make the most sense. Raiders the Raiders are, are the team that make the most sense. Possible but, too. But Josh McDaniels may be looking at everything going on there and being like, I, I, you know, that's that's going to be a lot of money to come into. But then again, who knows? Who knows? Well, I, at the end of the day, I know one thing. I, I, I am not willing to put the Niners higher than three going into next year at the moment because Trey Lance is a question mark until I can see him play more. Once I can see Trey Lance in OTAs, once I can see him in training camp, see him in some preseason action and get a good feel of where he's at, then I, I can 100% say with confidence where I feel the Niners are going to fall. Until that time, three is where I'll put him because I know the defense is going to be intact. You're still going to have all the weapons off offensively. But Trey Lance is a question mark. Is he going to be what Jimmy Garoppolo was? Is he going to elevate above Jimmy Garoppolo? Um, is he going to be slightly less better than what Jimmy Garoppolo was in 2019 in his rookie year? If he's you just don't Jimmy, know. There are two then. Correct, but I don't know if he's that yet. I don't know if he's I mean, if he's quite not, that, there yet. Oh, it's only 18 touchdowns and, and, and 13 picks. Like, but that, that, that's not a high, and only like 3,800 yards. Like that, that, that's not a, a a high bar to get to there. I I don't disagree with you. <laughs> that's not, not I, like he's gonna. Uh, I, uh, I don't disagree with you. Does he have? Not, does he have all Tom the potential? Brady. Does he have all the potential in the world to he's blow those numbers out of the water? Here. Absolutely, he does. A- absolutely, he does. I'm just mad that. Will he is the question. Can he is, is you know, I know he has the ability we to. Could, Will he do it? I don't know. Get Tom for one year, though. That would have been nice. He still could. So you have heard the arguments. You have heard the battle. You've seen the face-off. Who do you think won the argument? Was it Alex? Was it Jason? Do you agree with both of them? Yes. Were they both right on a lot of things? And you were just, you're just you're with them all the way. Or do you not agree with either one of them? In fact, they're both hot garbage. And you're ready to, to move on with somebody else and face Whoa. off. Is this really Jason's show? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm throwing the challenge. You know, like that. Wait a minute. Anyways, Alex always likes to say the crazy things at the end of the episode, so I thought I'd give it a whirl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, he does. Um, but yeah, I thought, this, I thought this was a good episode. I thought you guys made great points on both sides. I think everyone will as well, as it was a, a very well-contested argument. didn't get crazy. No buffoonery this time. <laughs> um, it was exciting. And I, I'm looking forward to what everyone thought about it. Same here. I want to hear from you. Make sure you vote down below. Make sure you let us know what you thought. Uh, it'll be the, I don't know if this will be the last one of these that we do, but it might be the last one we do for a little bit of time here as we, agency, as we get ready, so as we get ready for, you know, free agency and big events. We'll probably, you know, do 49ers face off specials as we get ready for, for season three of the 49ers cutback season two of 49ers face off. And you might see Jason on something else. I'll pop in there. every once in a while. Well, there might be, yeah, there might be some other things. There's uh, always listen, room on, on, on the side of the table nowadays. <laughs> accurate. That is very accurate. Jay. Look at the, at the end of the day, there is tons of content coming your way. The off season is going to get absolutely crazy here on the 49ers cutback. So don't miss any of it. We hope you enjoyed this episode of 49ers face off. We'll catch you on the next one. And until that time, cut back crew and the faithful. Go Stay Bengals. safe. And remember the right way. Is, is always the 49ers. Joe Burrow still hasn't Who lost a, meaning, a meaningful game in wow. a long time. You weren't ready to stick on that in the text messages. <laughs>